guys and welcome to Knit Grit. In today's video, we're going to go over how to sew a button. So this is a really simple, easy thing that you can do, but if you don't know how to do it, then it does not seem like it's easy and it does not seem like it's simple. I actually did not know how to sew a button up until about a year ago or so. So um, I learned fairly quickly and it's just a thing that's a pain in the butt to not know if you don't know it. And I've been sewing all of the buttons in the world when I'm working on these little ear mask guards that I'm going to be donating. So I figured why not do a little tutorial on how to actually do that. Since I'm going to be making all these ear mask guards anyway, I'm going to be doing the video tutorial on how to do that, which I will link down below if you're interested in making one of these. It's a really easy pattern, so pop on over there if you haven't made one of these yet and you have a lot of cotton and buttons that you want to do. But it's a fairly simple thing. You're going to need whatever you're sewing things on, which I'm going to be using these little green buttons on this little ear mask guy. You're going to need a sewing needle and you're going to need thread. I understand that this is fairly large thread. This is what I've been working with because I'm working with yarn and cotton, so I don't want it to just go through. And I'm also really lazy and I don't like having to sew buttons at all and I find that this makes it so that it's super quick and easy. You're going to want to cut about, I don't know, in order to get both of these done I cut about six in, uh, 12 inches or so. So I'm going to plop that over here. I'm going to thread my needle and I found this really cool method. So the big thing that you do first is you're going to create a anchor knot, essentially. So the way that you go about that is I'm going to match and have it so that the, get the scissors out of the way so it stops making noise. I'm going to make it so that the thread is fed through. I've got so much polyfill everywhere, so I apologize for that. It's fed through, it's even, so you've got two ends right here. You're going to grip your two ends, right? and you're going to grab your tail end where your yarn is thread through. I'm going to hold that here. I now have kind of a loop going on here. I'm going to wrap my needle around three times. So I wrapped around three times and what I do next is I kind of pinch both together and I'm going to pull so that those three little loops are going through into the tip. So that knots them, and now I've got this anchor knot on the very end. It won't come undone, and it's just going to sit there. What I like to do next is I like to cut the tail of this. A lot of people sew buttons a lot of different ways. This is just the way that I find that I'm comfortable with doing it. So I've got a little anchor that's just going to hang out there. I'm going to show you how I sew one of these buttons, and then that's pretty much what I'm going to do. I've got polyfill everywhere. So some people go and have their anchor come through the bottom, but I prefer having it through the top. That way the button hides the anchor. So I'll show you what I mean by that. So this is the front of my work. I'm going to take my little sewing needle. I'm going to go through the middle of my stitches. I'm going to pull that anchor and it's going to put a little anchor right there. I'm going to bring my yarn back up from the back and into the front without trying to pierce myself because I'm terrible at that. But it's going to be close but not quite where the anchor was. So next I'm going to take my button and make sure that it is face up. So this is the dull end so I want that to be facing this way on the bottom so I don't want to see the dull end. So I want to put my sewing needle through right there. Eek. And I'm going to take my sewing needle and go through the other side and kind of go back and forth a couple of times. I'm going to go through that again and kind of weasel my needle through the front again, pulling it each time I do that trying to stay in camera. There you go. And go through the other side again. So I'm just creating a couple loops. Going through the back. Just 
can be difficult trying to figure out where your eye meets up on the back. That can be annoying. And so. And then I go again. So I've done that three times now, and I've done that quite a few times. What I do next, and you don't have to do this if you don't want to, but this is just how I secure my buttons, personally. A lot of people don't do this for bigger buttons like this, but I just want to show you how a lot of people kind of prop up the button. You, you do this next step in order to get it so that the button kind of lays off of the material a little bit so it's easier to grab the button if your button is being used for like actually holding things. So I'm going to work from the back into the underside of my button. I want my pointy end to come up where the button will hide. So I'm going to pull that up and through and then I'm going to wrap my yarn, not my yarn, my thread around three times, kind of pulling it as I go. Two, pull, three, pull. Then, this is my last step, I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to pull it through, like so, underneath the button. And then I'm gonna take my ink. I'm going to take my needle and work it through that loop. So I made this thread a little bit too short, but see how it kind of makes a little slipped stitch right there? I'm going to pull it really tight and that's what I use to finish off. You can do two of those if you're super paranoid. I'm comfortable with that and I'm going to just cut my thread and that is what's going to get that button. Cut my thread like so Eek. and it's hidden underneath the button and you can barely see where any of it is. I'm going to do that again on the other side and then I'm all done. That is how you sew a button. That button ain't coming off and because I slip stitched you can't see any tails either. So I like this method. This is just how I do it. I'm sure a lot of other people are going to be like, no, you should do it this way or you should do it that way. Everybody's got their own personal style. This is how I do it personally. So I prepare myself for the comments down below. <laughs> All right. Um, I hope you like this tutorial. I've got tons of crocheting and knitting tutorials and patterns. All these things are linked down below if you want to follow us on Facebook or Instagram or anything else like that. If you like tutorials like this. We have a Patreon as well if anybody is interested in donating down there. We have a ton of rewards on our Patreon, so if you want to see the different rewards that we offer our patrons, you can go down and see the links down below. Thank you again for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe and hit the little bell before you leave if you want to see more videos like this. Until next time, guys. Bye!